Hi there, Doug Stuman with IT Creations. And today, we have another Gigabyte GPU server. This time a dual socket version, the Gigabyte G292-Z45. It's compatible with AMD's third generation AMD Epic Milan processors and AMD 3D vCache processors too. It's a little different than the G291-Z20 and the G292-Z22 we reviewed a while back, both of which support only a single socket AMD processor. However, they all use the same form factor. Let's take a look. With two AMD EPIC Gen 3 processors, this system can support up to 128 physical cores with top-of-the-line processors and up to 4 terabytes of memory. At only 2U, it also supports an impressive 8 double-wide GPUs for use with AI, AI training and inference, plus high-performance computing applications. Eight drive bays along the front of the chassis provide the CPUs and GPUs with close access to large data sets. With supply issues causing major strain on the microchip market, Gigabyte has still been able to deliver. I can't say that for many of the other manufacturers. If you would like to see a close single socket sibling, then click that link for Gigabyte's G292Z22, also with a third generation AMD EPIC processor. Let's flip the camera and get to it. This design is clearly working for Gigabyte and is found on a bunch of Gigabyte systems. Again, we have two large fans right and left with eight SAS SATA storage bays in the middle and a control panel on the left. The control panel has an on-off button and an ID button both with LEDs and a column of LED lights for LAN 1 and LAN 2 plus hard disk drive status LED. The drive trays also have LED status lights. On the back of the system, two large fans on the right and left with power supply units on the bottom. Then on top, a VGA port, dedicated RJ45 management port, ID button with LED, non-maskable interrupt button, and reset button on top. And then some LED lights again for LAN 1 and LAN 2 on the other side of the 1 gigabit Ethernet ports with dual USB 3.01 ports beside them. Above that are two low-profile PCIe slots. Want to save some ducats on one of these babies? Just go to IT Creations using that link and configure a system. If you mention this video at time of purchase, we'll give you $500 off a system you put together on our configurator priced at $5,000 or more just for watching this video. I mean, who doesn't like saving money? I mean, I suppose unless you work for the government or mortgage lender. Popping the lid off, you can see that dedicated management port provides access to the baseboard management controller, Aspeed AST 2500 module for remote and at chassis management of the system. There are several management options available for this system, not to mention third-party possibilities given it supports AMI, Megarack, SPX software, and firmware. It's compatible across a range of manufacturers too, and that's all you really need to know about that. There's a whole list of other features offered by Gigabyte's management console, and includes this list of capabilities to help you manage your system. Gigabyte's management console is really just for one server, but there is also Gigabyte Server Management, or GSM, for multiple servers, and is supported by Windows and Linux, plus compatible with IPMI 2.0 and Redfish. You get more functionality with Gigabyte Server Management, and I did mention it's free which would be my favorite price for goods and services. The system is also compatible with all the major operating system and including VMware and Citrix for a hypervisor. What is really quite interesting is the NVIDIA AI Enterprise software for use with the A100 GPUs. It's specifically for AI and data analytics with proven compatibility with VMware and Red Hat so you can get up and running quick. Inside the case starting from the front, the chassis, you can see these two large fans offer direct cooling for the GPU cages to either side. Two more fans positioned behind the HD backplane deliver fresh air right down the middle for the CPUs and memory modules. Given the eight GPU support on this system, cooling is essential to performance, and Gigabyte has a very clever design with those big fans on the front driving air over the front GPU cages, each of which can be outfitted with two double-wide GPUs. The GPU scented air from the first four GPUs is diverted into the middle of the chassis to merge with the DRAM and CPU scented air, then over the PCI slots and out the back. Now those last GPU cages to either side and back, again, each with two GPUs, never get any of the preheated air from the first set of GPU cages, which are blocked off. Instead, Gigantor fans in back pull fresh air in from perforated slots on the side, which is then pulled over the GPUs and sucked out the back of the chassis by the two big fans to either side. The back plane supports SAS at 12 gigabits per second and SATA at six gigabits per second. Only if you want to install SAS will you need the SAS HD RAID card. That card will go into one of the low profile slots at the back of the chassis. There are no M.2 slots or SATA DOM slots, 
so an add-on card would be installed if you need another option to boot the system. Both low-profile slots have a by 16 physical slot length, but one is actually by 8 PCI 4.0 link, and the other has a by 16 link. This is a dual root system, meaning half the GPUs are connected to one CPU and the other to the second CPU. All slots on the system are PCI 4.0, including those GPU slots. The system is designed for AI, AI inference, training, plus machine learning and high performance computing. For those types of applications, you might consider installing an NVIDIA A100 40 gig GPU, offering simply the best performance and enterprise ready software for AI. These cards have a TDP of 250 watts each. So eight times 250 watts, that's 2000 watts right there. So you can see how those 2200 watt PSUs are not redundant, with both providing some of the juice to power this mini Titan. <laughs> Did you see that Netflix anime, Attack on Titan? Watched it all night. I thought it was kind of lame. I mean, after 20 episodes, they never went to the basement to use the key. The A100 features Ampere architecture and offers significantly more performance overall than the previous generation. To be specific, 20 times the performance. Not only that, but it can be partitioned into GPU instances. If you want to learn more about that GPU, there is a link below in the description. The only other card mentioned in the QVL report, which is just an acronym for Qualified Vendor List, is the AMD M100 with CDNA architecture. CDNA is what AMD calls its GPU architecture and is an analog to NVIDIA's Ampere architecture. Highly likely there will be more cards supported on the system, like the V100, A2, A10, T4, and RTX 6000 for NVIDIA, and the M150 16GB and 32GB on AMD's side. Again, cooling is an important consideration on this chassis, even with the clear steps taken into account for any thermal buildup. That may be why the 80 gig version of the A100 is not certified in the system, as it has a TDP of 300 watts and would pull an additional 400 watts of power compared to only 200 watts on the 40 gig unit. Third generation AMD Epic processors provide a PCI 4.0 bus. With both processors installed, you can get 128 lanes. Yes, each CPU does have 128 PCI 4.0 lanes, but with two CPUs, you still only get 128 lanes. I mean, even with the third gen Intel Xeon scalable processors named after some lake, you only get 80 PCI 4.0 lanes in a dual processor configuration. Using Epix, you have 48 more PCI lanes than an Intel system. Instead of a SAS controller in back, you could also install some 200 gigabit per port high-speed Mellanox I.O. cards. Since each slot is controlled by one of the CPUs, it would also enable faster remote direct memory access of GPU memory and mitigate any latency, since not all GPUs go through the same CPU. They still need to talk to each other through AMD's Infinity Fabric. Back to the CPUs, each supports eight memory module slots for a total of 16 active memory module slots with both processors installed. Unsurprisingly, given the density of the system, there is a thermal design point limit on these CPUs of 240 watts. However, CPUs with up to 64 physical cores and 128 virtual threads can still be installed even at that configurable TDP. Milan X 3D vCache versions are also supported. At least the 7473X with 24 cores and the 7373X with 16 cores. Both draw 240 watts but offer significantly more cache at 768 megabytes compared to a maximum of 256 megabytes on the regular Milan processors. With a full core count, it can support up to 128 physical cores with 256 virtual threads. Each CPU also supports eight memory channels, which means each memory module is supported in its very own memory channel for maximum performance. Third generation Epic processors are designed to support up to four terabytes of memory each. That would be eight terabytes with 16 slots per CPU. But since we only have eight memory slots per CPU, we get four terabytes for the maximum capacity using 256 gigabyte modules in all slots. Most people will install like 512 gigabytes or maybe a terabyte max and have done with it. Registered, load reduced, and 3DS versions can be installed in the system, but standard RDIMMs and LRDIMMs, not the 3DS variety, will only support two terabytes. 3D memory modules are made on a stacking die enabling greater density of DRAM chips on the memory module. So Gigabyte does it again and, and again with a very familiar form factor. At 2U, this system really delivers a punch with support for up to eight double wide high performance GPUs. If you are considering AI, machine learning, AI training and inference, or just need a high performance GPU enhanced computing platform, check out the Gigabyte G292-Z45 GPU server. Like Baskin Robbins, available in a bunch of different flavors that all come in a remarkably similar package. And if you are looking for that next server, try IT Creations. Don't forget to mention this video for a little discount on your purchase. 
Until next time, I'm Doug Stewart with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.